femur. It is the longest and strongest bone in the human body. It is a long bone and is situated in the thigh region. Parts Upper end, shaft, lower end. The upper end has a head, neck, greater trochanter, and lesser trochanter. Head It is the uppermost structure of the femur which projects from the medial side of the upper end. It faces upwards, forwards, and medially. It forms two thirds of a sphere. It articulates with the acetabular cavity of the hip bone to form the hip joint. Fovea. This is a small depression in the center of the head which gives attachment to the ligament of the head of the femur and is intracapsular. Neck. It connects the head with the shaft of the femur and is about 5 cm in length. Neck shaft angle. The neck joins the head and the shaft at an angle of 125 degrees which enables the lower limb to move clear of the pelvis. It has two surfaces. Anterior, which is intracapsular and meets the shaft at the intertrochanteric line. Posterior, here the capsule extends till the medial half of the neck and meets the shaft at the intertrochanteric crest. It presents with a groove to lodge the tendon of the obturator externus. It also has two borders. Upper, which is concave, and horizontal, it meets the shaft at the greater trochanter. Lower border, which is straight and oblique and meets the shaft at the lesser trochanter. Greater trochanter. It is a large prominence that projects up from the junction between the neck and the shaft and has three surfaces and one border. The anterior surface is rough. Lateral surface has an oblique ridge. Medial surface presents with trochanteric fossa, which is a depression situated at the posterior inferior part. Another small depression in front and above the trochanteric fossa. Superior border. Its posterior part presents the apex of the greater trochanter. Lesser trochanter. It is a blunt conical prominence at the inferior medial part of the junction between the neck and the shaft. It faces backwards and medially. Intertrochanteric line. It is an oblique ridge placed between the two trochanters on the anterior side of the junction of the neck and the shaft of the femur. Attachments. The capsular ligament of the hip joint is attached to the inner part of the entire line. Iliofemoral ligament outside the capsular ligament. Intertrochanteric crest. It is a smooth, blunt ridge situated on the posterior surface of the junction of the neck and the shaft. Quadrate tubercle is a rounded prominence in its middle part. Shaft. The shaft is a long middle portion of the bone. It is broad in the upper and lower parts and narrowed in the middle. It has three borders and four surfaces. Lateral border. It separates the anterior from the lateral surface. Medial border. It separates the anterior from the medial surface. Posterior border. It is also known as the linea aspera. It is a thick, rough crest in the middle one-third of the shaft. It has a medial and lateral lip which diverge in the upper and lower parts. The medial lip is continuous above with the spiral line and below with the medial supracondylar ridge. The lateral lip is continuous above with the gluteal tuberosity and below with the lateral supracondylar ridge. Lateral and medial intermuscular septae are attached to the linea aspera on its lateral and medial lips respectively. Anterior surface it lies between the medial and lateral borders. Lateral surface lies between the lateral and posterior borders. Medial surface lies between the medial and posterior borders. Upper posterior surface. It lies between the spiral line and the gluteal tuberosity. The spiral line is a line that extends from the lower end of the intertrochanteric line till the middle lip of the linea aspera. 
Gluteal tuberosity is a broad ridge which is continuous below with the lateral lip of the linea aspera. Lower posterior surface. It is also known as the popliteal surface. It lies between the medial and lateral supracondylar lines. Lower end. It is the part that lies below the shaft and articulates with the upper end of the tibia. It is broad and expanded to provide a bearing surface for the transmission of the body's weight onto the tibia. It has two prominent masses on each side called medial and lateral condyles which are separated from each other by a depressed area called the intercondylar fossa. It consists of two articular surfaces, the patellar and tibial surface. Lateral condyle. It is stronger but smaller than the medial condyle. Lateral epicondyle is a rounded elevation on the lateral side. Medial condyle. It is more prominent than the lateral condyle. Adductor tubercle is a small projection at the uppermost part. Medial epicondyle is a small elevation which lies below and in front of the adductor tubercle. Intercondylar fossa. It is a depressed area between the two condyles. An intercondylar line separates it from the popliteal surface. It lies within the capsule of the knee joint but is mostly extrasynovial. Articular surfaces. Anterior, inferior and posterior surfaces of the condyles are covered by hyaline cartilage and make up the articular surface. It is divided into two parts. Upper patellar surface articulates with the patella, lower tibial surface articulates with the tibia. Patellar surface. It extends over the anterior surfaces of both the condyles but more on the lateral. It is separated from the tibial surface by two grooves which lodge the menisci during full extension of the knee. Tibial surface. It forms the posterior and inferior parts of the articular surface. It articulates with the condyles of the tibia with semilunar cartilages intervening. Determination of the side. The anterior surface of the shaft is convex. The head lies in the upper end and faces upwards and medially. The condyles lie in the lower end. Ossification. Ossification occurs in cartilage from one primary center for the shaft and four secondary centers for the other ends. Primary center in the shaft appears in the seventh week of intrauterine life. Three secondary centers for the upper end. One for the head appears in the first year, one for the greater trochanter between three to five years, one for the lesser trochanter appears between 12 to 15 years. All unite with the shaft independently between 14 to 18 years. One secondary center for the lower end appears at the time of birth and unites with the shaft at around 20 years. Clinical correlation. Hip fracture. A hip fracture is a break in the continuity of the upper quarter of the femur. Hip fractures are caused by a fall or a direct blow to the side of the hip. Some conditions may increase the chances, like osteoporosis, cancer, nutritional deficiencies. Types There are three types of hip fractures, intracapsular or subcapital. They occur at the junction of the head and neck and lie within the articular capsule. Intertrochanteric occurs between the two trochanters. Subtrochanteric occurs below the lesser trochanter. Fracture of the greater trochanter, fracture of the lesser trochanter. Clinical manifestations. Pain around the upper thigh and groin area. Shortened leg. The patient may hold the injured leg in a still position with the foot and knee turned outwards. Femoral shaft fracture. This is when there is a break in the shaft of the femur. A great amount of force is required to break the shaft. For example, a road traffic accident. The pieces of bone may line up correctly or be out of alignment. 
The fracture may be closed or open where the bone pierces the skin. Types Transverse fracture Break in a straight horizontal line going across the femoral shaft. Oblique fracture has an angled line across the shaft. Spiral fracture is a fracture line that encircles the shaft like the stripes on a candy cane. A twisting force to the thigh causes this type of fracture. Comminuted fracture is when the bone is broken into three or more pieces. In most cases, the number of bone fragments is proportional to the amount of force required to break the bone. Open fracture, the bone breaks in such a way that the bone fragments stick out through the skin or a wound penetrates down the broken bone. Clinical manifestations, sudden severe pain, patient will not be able to put weight on that limb, the leg may look shorter and may not look straight anymore. Fracture of the lower end of femur. This type of fracture is seen in elderly patients where the bones are weak or in case of road traffic accidents. The bone can break straight across or into many pieces. This kind of fracture can be opened or closed, open fractures being more complicated and harder to treat. Clinical manifestations. Pain with weight-bearing, swelling and bruising, Tenderness, deformity, the knee may look out of place and the leg may appear shorter and crooked.